Okay, in this uh, set of slides, we're going to review um, centroids and second moments of area, which are a very important concept in engineering that you're going to come across um, several times throughout your course, in particular for um, to, uh, sorry, solid mechanics and structures, where it's used a lot to help describe the resistance to bending of a beam. Uh, but in this uh, context, this week, we're going to be using it to just help us describe forces on a submerged surface. So it's important that, that we understand where these concepts come from and, and how, how they can be and what they describe. Okay, so a centroid of area, a center of area is centroid, is uh, simply put, the, the, area, the, the, the center of its area. Um, it's the distance from a stated origin to the geometric center of its area. Uh, it's often given the notation x bar y bar or, or as in the textbook x cg y cg and for a, for a regular shape like a square or for a, um, for a circle then it's self-evident you don't need to, to do this analysis but for a more complex shape an arbitrary shape where um, you know very irregular then you do need to do this and um, the, the approach that you need to take is a, is a general approach and in this case it's integration and you basically what you do is you for each axis that you're looking each kind of direction that you're looking to find the the, the center of area for uh, you basically construct a sum of moments and so what you have is a an incremental piece of area da in moving from its lower limit to its upper limit and you times that by its distance from the the moment arm or in this case the y-axis and the sum of all of those individual moments between um, the y-axis and each incremental uh, section of area da will it will be equal to the overall moment arm the center of um, gravity uh, x cg and the overall area so this is the key expression that the sum of the um, x cg times a is equal to the integral sum of each strip between x min and x max times the x distance from to that strip um, uh, and then if you solve that you get the you, you can solve for the um, moment uh, cg xcg so yeah you can consider it as a, as a sum of individual moments around the perpendicular axis and then if you want to get the actual xcg you have to divide through by the area exactly the same thing for the y direction except this time it's uh, a sum of moments around the x-axis and um, you get the corresponding form. Now, in the next few slides, we're going to apply this to some very simple shapes to understand the concept. So to start with, for a rectangular plate, we define our x and y-axis like this, and at the moment, this plate sits on the line y equals naught, the x-axis. It has a, a height of L and a width of B, and... Um, we, we can already see intuitively where the center of gravity is, but we're going to apply this method so that we see how it works. So the first thing we can do is substitute the, this strip area as the sum of its incremental distance in Y and its width B. So dA is B times dY. And using the expression from the last slide, we can say that we're going to integrate in between, F, sorry, Y is equal to zero and Y is equal to L uh, of Y dY. And what you can then do, you have um, the integral is y squared over 2 between L and 0. So you have uh, L squared over 2 minus 0. So L squared over 2 times B times BL, which is the area of the plate. Uh, the Bs cancel, one of the Ls cancel, and you're left with L over 2. So yeah, intuitively you knew that for this rectangular plate, the center of its area is going to be halfway from its lower axis to the top, L over two. But this uh, has demonstrated that you can apply the general principle, the general formula to, to, to find that, um, to that, that distance. And you can do this uh, for any shape. There's some um, more kind of general shapes that are given in the textbook, a triangle. Note that it's not, not an isosceles triangle that has a slight um, skew to one side to make it a bit more interesting, a circle and a semicircle. Uh, and there's some kind of standard definitions of where the centroid or center of gravity is in each case. Okay, so probably that's familiar to you, but uh, this, the next step might not be. 
This is where we extend that concept from a first moment of area or a centroid to a second moment of area. So it's exactly the same uh, idea, except instead of times in the area by y, you times the area now by y squared. So for instance, the first moment of area is the center of gravity times the area. And in this case, we're looking at the rotation around the x-axis. So it's the y uh, direction. The second moment of area, don't worry about why we'd want to use this yet, but just accept what it is. The second moment of area is exactly the same, except that it's y squared. So computing this now for, um, for, for the second moment of area, which has the notation usually x, i, x, x, we use the same idea that we break this area into uh, the product of its width and its, its incremental height. And um, we apply this, actually it's not from the last slide, it's from here. We apply this idea and we integrate between y is equal to zero and y is equal to l of y squared. And this time, because it's y squared, you get y cubed over three. And it's um, between, uh, and you have to be here. So this uh, integral simplifies because this is zero. So you just have b l cubed over three, b l cubed over three. So the second moment of area around the uh, x-axis is the base times the length uh, cubed divided by three. Something I haven't put here, which is important to note, is that the units of this quantity is meters um, cubed. So to the power of meters to the power of four, you have a, a dip, uh, the width and you have the length. So the overall quantity is meters to the power of four. So in fluid mechanics, we use this often to, um, as you're going to see shortly, uh, we use this often to help us understand the difference between the, the center of gravity or the, cent the centroid and the center of pressure uh, of a submerged object. They're two different things and the, the distance can, can be identified by calculating the, the second moment of area of that shape. And that's, where, that's why we're, we're reviewing it now. So it's in hydrostatics, it's used to find the distance between the center of area and center of pressure. Um, so it's convenient to redefine the quantity um, with respect to the center of its um, gravity or its centroid. So in the last slide, you saw that we calculated the second moment of area with respect to the base and this uh, x-axis passed through the base of the shape. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but it's passing through the center of the shape because in fluid mechanics, this, this, is, this is often what we do. So same approach, define the area strip, B, D, Y. This time, um, you know, exactly the same from Y min and Y max, but this time Y min is uh, minus L over two and Y max is plus L over two. So slightly different, you have to then uh, substitute L over two cubed, get L cubed over um, two to the power three, eight times three, 24, and the same here, minus and then minus, because it's uh, cubed, L cubed over 24. So you're left with 2 over 24, which cancels to 1 over 12, uh, B, L cubed. So the second moment of axis, second moment of area around the centroid in this case is slightly different. You remember the last slide around the base was B, L cubed over 3. So it, it varies according to where you define your, um, your reference point. And again, this is a quantity which can be computed for around any axis um, and um, for any shape. And you can, you can see that in some of these uh, examples taken from the textbook, you have uh, some, some values of i, x, y are zero. And in some cases, uh, in this case, actually it's not. In all other cases, it's, um, it's zero. And this, this, this is only non-zero if, uh, if the shape is, um, not symmetric around the, the y-axis. In this case, this case, in this case, the shape is symmetric, mirror symmetry around the y-axis. In this case, it isn't. So we have a non-zero value for the, um, the moment i, x, y. You, you can see that there would be a definition for i uh, in any plane, in any direction. It can get quite complicated in, the, in a 3D arbitrary shape. And um, in most cases for regular shapes, 
we we would see these given in textbooks and reference books. You wouldn't need to calculate this in an exam for this module. Um, you'd be given the expression that you need, but it's still very important that you understand where it comes from when we use these expressions in, in the examples for hydrostatics. And um, this should this should help you understand um, uh, how to, how to how to interpret these quantities when you come across them in statics and structures too. Okay, that's it.